The great Mark Twain famously said that those who master their own words have mastered reality. As a writer, you can use words to make people laugh or weep or shiver, and if you're really talented, you can even put them in Mark Twain's mouth. Despite this, new writers tend to overlook their importance. When you've finally got your outlines and your characters all figured out, putting it to paper seems like a straightforward enough job. Needless to say, it is not. My name is Julian Tundra, I'm the author of the Dav Ivan historical fiction series, and this is the nearly complete guide to writing your novel. Episode 4, Words and How to Choose Them Now I don't mean to talk about grammar or punctuation here, although for God's sake do get those in order. The thing we as new writers so tragically underestimate is that all words have meaning. Well, obviously right, but it's easy to overlook just how much you're saying between the lines. Writing a word by definition means making a choice, because for everything you say there is another way to say it. People don't just objectively witness the world around us, we assign meaning to anything we see, hear, smell, taste or feel. I've read books where the authors seem like they're writing an encyclopedia, and completely lost me in the process. I don't know about you, but when I meet someone I barely notice their high cheekbones or how far their eyes are set apart. That might work if I'm a detective or a model scout, but it's much more likely that I think of them as stern or distant or handsome. On the other hand, you can also be too colourful. A common mistake among novice writers is to fill the pages with flowery prose and pass it off as good writing. And again, that might work if your character is very introspective and your book's all about personal growth, but far more often it comes across as gratuitous and distracts from the story. Imagine you want to describe a house with a red door. Seems easy enough, right, but compare these options. They might both be describing the same thing, but it doesn't take a genius to see that they're entirely different. Now, chances are you're assuming the second one must be better, but the truth is that both can be great or terrible depending on the situation. Because in either case, a whole lot is being said between the lines. In this sentence, maybe our protagonist is revisiting his boyhood home, where he lived in a wealthy family but some traumatic event took place. That would explain how he notices the recent pain job the sense of being shut out and his generally mature choice of words. Here, on the other hand, you might be recalling some haunting childhood dream, in which case it makes much more sense for the language to be rather basic and the exact details forgotten. But in many cases, you might opt for the third option, not describing the house at all. If this is the place that I come home to every day, then I would no longer notice that the door is red. If it's just one of many buildings that I pass in the street, I might see it, but I would still not give a second thought to it. The trick in finding the right words is to use them only when you absolutely need to. One telltale sign of newbie writers, and one that I've struggled with a lot, is being far too obvious in what you write. By now, you've probably stumbled upon the age-old writer's creed of show, don't tell. Now, this warrants an episode of its own, and there's definitely a time and a place for telling, but it is true that inexperienced writers tend to be too explicit out of mere sloppiness. If one of your antagonists is supposed to be evil, don't just mention it. Show your readers by having them headbutt a kangaroo in the womb. Or, even better, spread it out over a bunch of tiny headbutts, so your reader will grow to realize it as your story progresses. As readers, we don't care for a finished puzzle. Instead, Give us the separate pieces and then let us work it out for ourselves. Oh, and dialogue. Dialogue is super hard to get right, because there's a million things that influence how people speak. Again, we'll get more in depth in the future, but an old trick to spot bad writing is to read your dialogue out loud. If it sounds stiff and unnatural, rewrite. If it's long and superfluous, cut it down. If it sounds like a bad porn, either scrap it or negotiate the movie rights. But in the end, your writing style is one of the things that defines you most as an author, and finding it is a long but glorious process of trial and really big errors. There will be plenty of terrible choices along the way, but rest assured that as long as you make them consciously, you'll be a better writer for them in the end.